Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography, and I want to give a big shout out to one of our community members, Nina, for bringing up a very good point and asking a very good question about Noise Exterminator and Deep SNR. And that brings us to today's video where we're going to dive deeper into the differences between Deep SNR and Noise Exterminator. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. Now let's jump into PixInsight and take a deeper dive into the differences between Deep SNR and Noise Exterminator and see if Noise Exterminator can even compare. In my first Deep SNR video, I compare Deep SNR to Noise Exterminator using NGC 2264. And one of our community members, Nina, brought up a very good point and a very good question. And thank you, Nina, for bringing this up. I love it, and we're going to go ahead and address that. So the point that was brought up and the question that was brought up is it's unfair to compare Deep SNR to Noise Exterminator while using default values. Those values are there and able to be adjusted for a reason. So if we were to adjust the default values of Noise Exterminator, can Noise Exterminator do as good of a job of Deep SNR? And that is an amazing question, and we're going to go ahead and address that right now. Now, to keep the playing field even, I'm going to use NGC 2264 again, and what we're going to do is bring it up to the point of applying Noise Exterminator. Now, I did mention that Deep SNR does need to be run early on in the workflow because it does have some quirks to it, and we're going to address that in another video. But as we saw in my first Deep SNR video, Deep SNR does an amazing job regardless. So let's go ahead and get NGC 2264 here up to the point where we would apply Noise Exterminator. And if you have any questions on anything you're about to see, please watch my PixInsight series. I go through all of the processes along with my entire workflow. And of course, if you have any questions, ask away. So let's go ahead and do a link stretch here and I already know that the blue channel is my most prominent. And that brings me to another point. I was asked a very good question. Why do I go off of my most prominent channel? So make sure to stay tuned because we're going to address that as well. Now, I already know, again, my blue channel is the most prominent. So we're going to open up Linear Fit. I'm going to go ahead and apply my blue channel to Linear Fit as my reference channel and apply the blue channel to the red and green channels. And once we're done with applying the blue channel to the red and green channels, we're going to go ahead and bring out channel combination. And then we're going to use channel combination to go ahead and reapply all three channels back together. Let's go ahead, for the sake of room, get rid of our separated color channels, get rid of linear fit. Let's do a linked stretch on our new image and you'll see that our color channels are now balanced. Now what we're going to do is go ahead and bring out dynamic crop. And we're going to crop the image to get rid of any stacking artifacts that might be present within the image as that can actually affect the effectiveness of background extraction as well as SPCC or spectrophotometric color calibration. Now that we have our uh, image cropped. We also lost our astrometric solution, so we can just go ahead and reapply our astrometric solution. Uh, basically, what an astrometric solution is, if you are unsure, astrometric, astrometric solution is going to be the coordinates of your image. So, what uh, PixInsight is going to do is plate solve this image here. It's going to compare the stars essentially to a star chart, know exactly where this image was taken. And then SPC is going to use that information to know exactly what part of the sky it's in and apply the correct colors. Now what we're going to do here is do a quick um, correct only with Blur Exterminator. And what this is going to do is correct any potential issues with the stars. From here, we're going to go ahead and bring out Graxpert and do a quick background extraction.
And then now that the background is extracted, what we can do is open up a preview, grab a little bit of pure background, no nebulosity, and I try to stay away from stars. We're gonna go into process all processes, open up uh, spectral photometric color calibration, and then we're gonna go ahead and choose our sensor along with our filters for each color channel. Region of interest is gonna be the preview that we set. Triangle, drag and drop. And then SPCC went ahead and took the astrometric solution and assigned the correct colors to the image. Let's go ahead and delete our preview, open up a luminance. We'll do a quick stretch on the luminance. And then we'll go into full width half max eccentricity and grab the median full width half max. In this case, 2.55. So 2.545 will round up to 2.55. We can go ahead and open up Blur Exterminator again. And this time we're gonna plug in 2.55 in the PSF diameter and then run the full Blur Exterminator. This is gonna fully correct our stars. Now from here, I'm gonna go ahead and clone our starred image and we're gonna minimize it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and remove the stars from our current image. And the reason that I wanna do this, there's a lot of uh, people in this group and some of us prefer to do our workflow with stars and some people prefer to do their workflow without stars. And when we start playing around with the detail uh, slider in Noise Exterminator, there's gonna be some effects that we need to be aware of. And they are more prominent when we have our stars in our image. So what we're gonna do here we're gonna clone our starless NGC2264 image. And now we can agree that these two images are identical in every single way. Let's go ahead and zoom in and we're gonna go ahead and clone the zoom. And we're gonna go open up deep SNR. We'll assign that to the right image. And we're gonna go ahead and open up Noise Exterminator and assign that to the left image. Now, in the first video, we already know what Deep SNR is gonna do with a full strength value. In other words, the, the strength slider is all the way as far as it can go. We already know it's gonna take out all of the noise and it's gonna retain a lot of this detail within the image. So now, Let's go ahead and do a maximum strength on Noise Exterminator. And what we're gonna see here is our noise is also gone. The image is also a lot smoother. As you can see, some of this finer detail of where my cursor is on the right image, if we go to the left image, it's smoothed out. It's not as poppy. It's not as strong in contrast. So this is what we expected and this is what we discovered in the first video where I compared Deep SNR to Noise Exterminator. But now to Nina's point and an excellent observation, excellent question, what happens if we play with this detail slider? So we're at 0.15 right now. Let's double that to 0.30. We want to make sure that we back off what we just did. We don't want to apply the noise exterminator twice. Let's go ahead and apply, again, full strength on, on the uh, denoise, and then we're going to double the detail from 0.15 to 0.30. And what we find here is if we take this region in here again, we're starting to see ever so slightly starting to see some of that detail come out. However, I don't know if this um, screen or video can do it justice. When we zoom in here, we can see a little bit of contrast in this structure over here. Let's go ahead and clone that zoom. Okay, 
this structure right here where we have a little bit of contrast. So we can see a little bit of a band of nebulosity here and then a little bit of band of nebulosity here. It's still just really smooth, okay? The contrast is not as strong with the uh, noise exterminator. Let's go ahead and back it again. If I can go ahead and uh, back the correct image here. And let's double our detail again. So from 0 0.30 to 0 0.60. And let's run noise exterminator on our left image. And again, we see a little bit of the contrast where my cursor is on the right image. We see a little bit of the contrast coming out. However, we have it a little bit coming out on the, on the noise exterminator image. It's still the contrast differences just is not there. It's still a very smooth image as you can see. Now, let's go ahead, let's back it out again. Let's just max our detail slider. And this right here is the absolute maximum that noise exterminator can go. This is as good as it gets. As you can see, it's getting very smooth. It's over smooth here. Let's go ahead and match our, let's match our zoom again. And we're very, very smooth. We're still lacking on the contrast. Now, if we were to, there I go again, going on the wrong image. If we were to go ahead, let's back down our noise, uh, denoise strength. Let's keep the detail up, but we're gonna back down our denoise strength. We're not quite as smooth, but we still have some noise to deal with, okay? So the, the question, can Noise Exterminator do as good of a job? It, it really kind of is an apples and oranges question, and I'll get into that in just a moment here. I do wanna caution on one thing here. When we're playing with this detail slider, we have to be very careful. What I mean by that, the areas that already have high contrast are gonna be highly exaggerated. We can see these types of areas in where my cursor is on the left image. In this area over here, that uh, detail slider will really make them pop. So you wanna be very careful. When you're working your, your Pixinsight workflow, um, Subtlety is everything, a little bit goes a long way. Let's go ahead, let's minimize our starless images, and let's bring out our starred image. I'm gonna go ahead and clone again. So we have, as we can agree on, identical images that we're working on again. Let's zoom in, and let's go ahead and clone that zoom. And once again, let's go ahead and run Deep SNR at full strength. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start slow on Noise Exterminator. We already know how Noise Exterminator is gonna react with an image. Let's go ahead and just bump the detail straight up to 0.6. Let's run full strength on denoise on noise exterminator and let's go ahead and apply and this will immediately show exactly what i'm talking about with the detail slider you'll start getting rings around your high contrast areas let's zoom in to these three stars on the right image that was used uh, with deep snr let's clone that and you can see those rings that I'm talking about. We're just over halfway on the detail slider. Let's go ahead and back off and I'm gonna just max everything out on Noise Exterminator so you can immediately see what I mean. These black rings, you're gonna find that everywhere on all of your high contrast areas and that's what you wanna be very careful of when you're adjusting detail on Noise Exterminator. It could definitely have an effect, it can do very good things, 
you're going to want to be careful, especially when you're working with high contrast images and especially when you're working with images with stars in them. Now, again, the question, which one's better? Well, this is an apples and oranges question because DeepSNR is still in its early stages. In fact, DeepSNR isn't even meant for one-shot color cameras and we have a one-shot color camera image over here and it's still doing an amazing job. And I think I can uh, speak for a lot of people here when I say I'm excited to see where this uh, process goes. If it's already doing this well early on in its stages and also doing this well early on in its stages plus on a data set that it's not even meant to work for, I am super excited to see exactly where this process goes. Um, now there, there are quirks and we're gonna get into those quirks in another video uh, where we're gonna go through workflows because in order for deep SNR to work at its full potential, I wanna say, it's gotta be applied pretty early on before you do any kind of deconvolution work such as blur exterminator. You'll get some weird you know, artifacts that kind of resemble noise uh, the image kind of looks a little bit rough, and I'm going to show you how to get past that. But again, as this uh, process develops, I'm excited to see where it goes. Noise Exterminator, on the other hand, it is very user-friendly, very easy to use. Um, I have had no issues with it. It can be applied pretty much everywhere on any data set and uh, it does an amazing job. And the detail that you lack, that DeepSNR has where Noise Exterminator does not, we can get past that with um, you know, different processes that I have videos on, such as your local histogram equalization, as well as multi-scale linear transform to really bring out those missing details. Uh, so it really just depends, and we'll see where DeepSNR goes as it uh, evolves in its um, in its development stages. But I wanna hear what you guys think. Drop a comment in the comment section. What are your thoughts? Have you used DeepSNR versus Noise Exterminator? Um, how is it working for you? And uh, I hope that you found this useful. Do me a favor, that channel icon that popped up, hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any upcoming content. Drop a comment in the comment section. Did you learn anything new? What questions do you have? Are you currently using DeepSNR and Noise Exterminator? And then check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.